Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you very much, uh, Minister Baines, for that presentation. I appreciate that. My first question is going to be around the Post-Secondary Institution Strategic Investment Fund. Uh, recently, you had visited the riding of Sault Ste. Marie and had announced uh, $5 million for Sioux College, five, almost $3 million for uh, Algoma University, and $5 million for the uh, Shinwook Trust for the Aboriginal Discovery Centre. And, uh, you know, I thank you for that. So I have a great interest in this particular program. And in the report, it talks about 249.3 million extra uh, to that particular fund. Can you talk about the short, medium, long-term uh, gains that this amount of money uh, could achieve? Uh, thank you very much for that question. And um, as per our last budget, one of the key investments we made as part of our overall innovation agenda, as part of our overall demonstration that we want to step up our game when it comes to building that partnership model that I talked about in my concluding remarks, was how do we create a better collaborative environment with our universities and colleges and academic institutions from coast to coast to coast. So we introduced a $2 billion strategic investment fund that you alluded to and that I was very fortunate to make some local announcements in the Sioux and was really well received by the college and university and by the Aboriginal community. And the objective of that fund is not only do we make these investments, but we want to leverage the provincial, the provinces and the territories and also the institutions. And the hope is that $2 billion actually turns into $4 billion and when it's properly leveraged from across uh, different levels of government across the country. And the objective of that, again, is to help really create world-class facilities, to help really help focus on areas where we can innovate, to create an environment where Canadian students have some of the best opportunities to learn in a state-of-art facility where they do research, and to also allow us the ability to attract some top talent from around the globe as well. And that's what I was talking about, the global skill strategy. Also, the benefit with that is the short-term jobs created with infrastructure. So as you put the shovels in the ground and you make these investments, that'll create short-term jobs as well. And also creates an environment to, again, focus on areas around STEM, for instance, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, where we can create long-term jobs as well. The objective of this initiative was to make sure that not only do we make these investments, but they are, will be complete by 2018. And the original allocation of the funding of this $2 billion was $494 million in the first year, $1.25 billion in the second year, and $245 million in year three. But because we work very closely and we have a really good working relationship with our provinces and territories, uh, we had to adjust the program funding profile to $744 million in the first year. So that includes the supplementary estimates numbers that you see here, plus what was in supplementary estimates A, Schedule A. So when you combine the two, that's roughly $744 million in the first year and $995 million in the second year, and we're still maintaining our target for year three at $245 million. So this again speaks to the fact that we have a, a program that's really well received by the academic institutions. We have a really good working relationship with our province and territories. We're getting the money out in a timely manner to create jobs, and we're also strengthening our academic institutions to help Canadians who are studying domestically and to allow us to attract some of the best and brightest, which is so critical in terms of the talent piece of our innovation agenda. Thank you very much. Uh, next question is the um, in regards to as well uh, this, this upcoming year we're going to be celebrating Roberto, Dr. Roberta Bondar's uh, 25th anniversary as Canada's first woman in space. And uh, I noted in, in, in uh, your report the $10 million to support the cutting-edge research and development through the European Space Agency Advanced Research and Technology Systems Program. Could you explain exactly what, it, what kind of benefits that would, would have for that particular program? So as you know, the Canadian Space Agency received uh, an investment of $379 million in our 2016 budget. Uh, this was a significant investment to space and we connected it with our commitment to aerospace as well because there's a lot of innovation taking place in this sector. Uh, and that commitment was really a reflection of our long-term plan on the International Space Station and looking forward to how we can continue to work with NASA and other partners and allies to make sure that we have a presence when it comes to space. You know, we take a lot of pride in the Canada arm uh, and how that has direct applications now in industry. For example, a lot of that technology, a lot of the robotics is being used 
uh, at the surgery table uh, in, our, in our hospitals, for example. And so we're seeing not only these applications in space, but direct correlation in some of the key sectors like the healthcare sector uh, in Canada. So that $10 million commitment that we have that you alluded to with respects to uh, the advanced research in telecommunication systems, that's really with respects to what we're doing with our European allies. And the idea, again, is how can we collaborate on research and development? And we want to provide an opportunity for our industry in particular and our SMEs to have access to that R&D so they can, be cutting, they can be on the cutting edge of new solutions that they can be able to compete with some of those new technologies. And so that's what the uh, major benefit of this initiative is, is to create that R&D partnership so it benefits industry as well. Because one of the challenges we have, and we see this across different sectors, mind you, space and aerospace are the exceptions, we're seeing a decline by Canadian companies in research and development. So we feel now is an opportunity to government to show leadership in this area. And this $10 million investment with Europe really helps us build that partnership with industry so they have access to research and development. That's good. One minute. Uh, very quickly, I guess, just with the minute left, you also met with a number of companies around the, the clean tech industry in um, Sault Ste. Marie while you were there. If you wish to expand a little bit on the, the um, support that's available in just the time remaining for all companies in Canada. So as you know, our government has been very clear that we want to reach our ambitious targets to uh, achieve our climate change goals in Paris, a COP21. But we recognize that now more than ever, we have a responsibility to explain that the environment and the economy go hand in hand. And that when we're trying to achieve these targets, we can actually create an economy that creates jobs. So it's not simply about the environment, but it's the environment connected to the economy in a meaningful way. You know, we talk about blue-collar jobs or white-collar jobs, but we also have a responsibility to promote green-collar jobs. And these jobs prevail in every single sector. So when we were in the Sioux, we saw how this prevailed in so many different sectors, not only in renewable, but how even companies were more efficient in terms of their use of, of energy and how they were being more efficient in terms of the outcomes that we're getting. So to keep that in mind, we made an investment of a billion dollars. Point, of order, to point, point, of, point of order, Mr. Chair, I believe we're about 20 some odd seconds over, and unfortunately that will end up hurting the New Democrats' opportunity to ask some questions to the Minister. Mr. Baines, we're going to move on. Um, that we invested or allocated in the budget in clean technology speaks to the fact that we want to build partnerships. Uh, that the government already, for example, ranks ninth amongst the OECD countries when it comes to government-led R&D with industry. We want to continue to send a clear signal to the market that a low-carbon economy is a priority for this government. It's not only good for the environment, good for our health, but it's also good for creating jobs as well. And just to put things in